This is your analysis, lecture one, part three. We're going to continue talking about reagent strip testing and what the different pads on the reagent strip indicate. So we're going to first start out with pH and what reaction pH is. pH of a solution indicates the acidity and the alkalinity of a substance. It's measured on a scale of 0 to 14. 0 is the most acidic, 14 is the most basic or alkaline, and 7 right in the middle is neutral. Normally urine is just slightly acidic at about 6.0. Here's a physical representation of the pH scale. It might help you remember it a little bit better. As you decrease in numbers, you are increasing in acidity. As you increase in numbers, you are increasing in alkalinity or basic. 7 right in the middle obviously is neutral. Urine samples must be examined when fresh to avoid bacteria multiplying and causing inaccurate results. And protein is normally not found in urine of healthy individuals. Urine may contain a small quantity of protein after exposure to cold, strenuous muscular activity, acute stress, eating large amounts of protein. But note that these are considered physiologic responses and are not symptoms of a disease. Proteins are relatively large compounds that are typically filtered out of urine by the glomerulus of the kidneys, and presence of protein can indicate that the person is in some sort of renal dysfunction. Common factors affecting pH. If you have a high pH, you may have a diet that's high in vegetables, citrus, or dairy. Urinary tract infection might be present. You may be taking high vitamin C um, doses. The urine sitting at room temperature too long can also cause a high pH. If you have a low pH, you may be experiencing a high protein diet. You may have diabetes mellitus. You may be in a state of starvation or have renal tuberculosis. Glucose may be indicative of diabetes, gestational diabetes and pregnancy, stress, infection, Cushing syndrome, which has to do with your adrenal glands, or it may be caused by the use of some medications. Glycosuria is any abnormal sugar that is found in the urine. Sugar typically spills into the urine when the blood sugar level exceeds the renal threshold for glucose. So when you have too much sugar within your blood, obviously it's going to spill over into your kidneys exceeding the renal threshold. The renal threshold for glucose is approximately 160 to 180 milligrams per deciliter of glucose in the bloodstream. Hematuria, that is a condition of having blood in the urine. This is abnormal unless a contamination is found from a female during her menstrual cycle. Occasionally it's caused by different medications. However, when you are checking in a patient and you are documenting their chief complaint, you can document hematuria. You cannot diagnose them with a urinary tract infection. However, if they do have blood present in their urine when you do the reagent strip test, you can say that the patient has hematuria. Any occult blood, which is going to be hidden blood, may indicate that the patient is anemic. They may have a urinary tract infection or a UTI. They may be experiencing kidney stones or they may have had some kind of trauma. Ketones, these are the byproducts of fat metabolism and typically they're only seen in conditions such as pro poorly controlled diabetes, um, dehydration or starvation. They're typically only seen in conditions such as ingestion of large quantities of aspirin, high protein diets, these high protein diets such as the South Beach diet or the Atkins diet. Um, occasionally after general anesthesia you'll find ketones in a patient's urine and they tend to evaporate at room temperature. Bilirubin is another component that you'll be testing on your reagent strips. Bilirubin is the product of the breakdown of hemoglobin which is the component of your blood that carries oxygen. The presence in urine of bilirubin may be one of the first signs of liver disease, obstructive biliary disease, or mononucleosis. Large amount in the urine will cause the urine to turn yellow-brown to dark orange. 
and the specimen with large amounts of bilirubin should be stored away from the light, which causes the breakdown. Some of you have had babies that have had a problem with the bilirubin buildup, and they end up with jaundice. They end up kind of looking um, a yellowish tinge to their, their skin and their eyeballs. And um, an interesting fact to that is that they will oftentimes treat that with just putting the baby in sunlight because the sunlight will cause the breakdown of the bilirubin and cause it to be excre excreted um, through their kidneys into their urine and obviously out of the body. Um, but anyways, if you have a specimen that does have large amounts, it should be stored away from light um, in probably a darker container. Urobilogen is different than bilirubin. Um, this is the result of red blood cell destruction or RBC destruction. It's elevated in any condition causing an increase in bilirubin and present in small quantities under normal conditions. If no urobilogen is present, there may be a bile duct obstruction. Reagent strips usually are not sensitive enough to detect an absence of urobilogen. Nitrates. A measurement of nitrates is a method for detection of bacteria. Uh, the presence often indicates a UTI or urinary tract infection. A byproduct, it is a byproduct of chemical breakdown of certain bacteria. You can get a false positive if a specimen sits at room temperatures too long, and specimens that cannot be immediately tested should be refrigerated. Another thing that you'll be testing are leukocytes. These are your white blood cells. So under normal conditions, a few leukocytes are found in urine. When present in sufficient quantity, they are usually indicative of a UTI or urinary tract infection. Leukocyte esterase test, an esterase or ACE, anything that ends in ACE is usually an enzyme. Um, this is a reagent strip that detects the esterase released by white blood cells. The darker the color on the strip, the greater the number of white blood cells. When the test is positive, you need to always check to see if the results correlate with the rest of the patient's report. Protein tests should be positive, and it is likely that an elevated pH, also microscopic bacteria, would be present. So all of those things should be present when you have a leukocyte positive. If you don't, then you should go back and retest the urine. Another method of testing urine, other than the reagent strips, are reagent tablet testing. And this may be used to verify the presence of glycosuria. It's routinely performed when reagent tests for glucose is positive, and it's sometimes used in place of a reagent strip. Chemically treated tablets may be used to test for glucose and acetone. Clinitest tablets may be used. Acetest tablets may be used and sulfosalicylic acid turbidity test may also be used. This is an example of testing for glucose in urine using the tablet method. Do not touch the bottom of the tube when testing the tablets for glucose because the tube will become very hot from the chemical reaction happening inside. When using an automated urine chemical analyzer, you use light photometry to test the strips. Some of the analyzers read the test strips and report the results on a printout sheet. Quality control protocols must be followed, and you can refer to Table 46-2 in the student text. So after physical and chemical analysis, fresh urine is placed into tubes to prepare them for microscopic evaluation. A centrifuge rotates urine tubes at high speeds using centrifugal force to separate substances of different densities, and densities is just how compact something is. Sediment is solid material remaining in the urine after the supernatant is poured off, and a special stain may be used to provide better contrast. Using a pipette, a drop of suspended sediment is placed on a microscope slide and covered with a slip for viewing you need to refer to procedure 46-8, preparing a urine specimen for microscopic examination, for detailed instruction on this technique. And this shows you a um, test tube being placed into a centrifuge, which is going to spin that down uh, for a allotted amount of time. And that will end up with a tube that will have supernatant 
and um, liquid on it as well. So preparing a urine slide for microscopic examination, uh, you pour out most of the liquid supernatant from the tube, but you keep the sediment. After mixing the sediment well, use a dropper to place a drop of urine on the slide. And then you're going to look at it underneath the microscope. So hopefully most of you have had some kind of exposure to microscopes in high school. If you have not, we will be bringing those out during class so that you can understand a little bit more about how a microscope works. When you use a low power field, it shows less detail but shows a larger area to be evaluated for counting. When you use a high power field, it evaluates a smaller area in greater detail for better identification. A urine microscopic examination is preferred um, when you are looking for a numerical range when reporting formed elements. A slide is moved several times to evaluate different fields of view. So you're going to look at it from different perspectives. Cells or casts are counted and an overall range is given. And it is preferable to use numerical range when reporting any kind of formed elements. When they're talking about formed elements, those are the solid elements, such as any kind of red blood cell, white blood cell, um, any other kind of cells that are in there, whether it's platelets or other kind of things. Um, you want to use numerical ranges when doing that. The way you can give those ranges are occasional, which means 0 to 3, few, which is 3 to 6, Moderate is going to be 6 to 12. Many is going to be 12 or more. But there's also TNTC, which is too numerous to count. Microscopic analysis evaluates formed elements. And those would be cells such as epithelial, red blood cells, white blood cells. You have casts, bacteria, and yeast. There are parasites, spermatozoa, crystals, and any kind of contaminants. So urine pregnancy testing, this is tested through either a blood test or a urine test. You can use the dipstick or reagent test, or you can do a clean catch midstream. You must be sent to the laboratory um, for analysis. Blood tests are generally more accurate earlier than urine tests will be. And any CLIA waived pregnancy tests uh, that are performed by a POL, which is a physician office laboratory, um, would be agglutination or enzyme immunoassay. Tests are also available for OTC over the counter. Positive results usually indicate women are pregnant. And a positive result may also mean women, a woman was pregnant and had a recent miscarriage or abortion due to the fact that their hormone levels are still elevated. The physician should confirm the diagnosis. Some HCG tests used uh, to screen for, are used to screen for cancer. HCG is human choreographic gonadotrophin. Uh, urine tests may incorrectly appear negative as well, so you want to be careful with those. They are not a definitive. Here is a urine pregnancy control test, and you can see one is positive and one is negative. You want to make sure to run those uh, control tests to make sure that the results that you're getting as you do those on your patients are accurate. So another component of being a medical assistant is that you may be asked to deal with some drug analysis. There are a couple of different scenarios that you may be involved with that would um, require you to test for drugs. One of those would be if a physician orders a lab urine for a patient that is possibly on some stronger um, narcotic medication or pain control medication just to make sure that the patient is actually taking their medication and that they're not taking too much of their medication. Um, if, if you do find out that the patient is not taking their medication and they're requesting refills of that medication, then they are abusing the medication, probably selling it on the side. Um, the other place that you might use this is an occupational med, which is a branch of medicine that deals with people in the workforce that have been injured. Um, what you would use for that, not always necessarily injured in occupational medicine. Occupational medicine will deal with um, renewing CDL licenses for truck drivers or even just employment issues as a um, uh, patient comes in to see them. They'll need to do a drug screen on it and you will sometimes be involved with that process. 
So drug testing can be performed on blood or urine, and many FDA-approved tests, um, there are many of them to choose from, commonly requested before employment or state licensure. And its important component, um, important component is the procedure involved in the collection and testing of the urine. You need to refer to Procedure 46-10 on performing a chain of custody urine collection. Quality control is a system that ensures patients' test results are accurate and reported in a timely manner. And products are sold within a quality control testing program. Conducting uh, testing on a regular basis, review the expiration date before any test, and precisely follow directions. You need to make sure one of the most important things is to document quality control in the quality control log. Tests are used for urinary pH, protein, blood, glucose, ketones, bilirubin, nitrate, urobilogen, and specific gravity, and they should be checked periodically by using solutions that contain a known amount of each of these substances, which is your control substance. You need to train all new employees and clean and maintain all instrumentation on a regular basis and document accordingly.